guys, Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music, and I'm gonna do some uh, some blues where we start really easy and then just keep stacking ideas. So hopefully you can kind of see a deconstructed blues um, all the way up to like, you know, more advanced. Uh, if you haven't yet, I appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I also have free courses at my website, martymusic.com, uh, so you can check the links in the description. I appreciate all that extra support. All right, let's break it down. All right, let's start with the one chord of the blues. In the key of E, it would be an E7 chord. That can be played all over the neck, but I'm gonna start with an E major chord. Take the ring finger off, and that is E7. Because we've added a D note, which is the flat seven. That D note is also the, on the third fret of the B string, so you could also play E7 with that note in there. You could play a full E with that note in there. Those are all combinations of an E7 chord. So now when we're learning the blues and some of those blues riffs, we're gonna just start with the two thickest strings, the open E, which is the root, and then that second fret of the A string. We'll put our index finger there. You know, that's a E5. hear it in rock, punk rock, heavy metal, you know, with more distortion, etc. But it's also where the blues starts. Just like that. Down, 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 down. I've got the strings vibrating under my palm there a little bit for that bit of a muted sound. And so from there, we're going to add the fourth fret A string with our ring finger. And so if I'm just talking about the A string, two, two, four, four, two, two, four, four, two, two, four, but I'm adding the E string with it. And so along, along the way with that, I, talk, uh, I can go back to that one chord or just talk about the full chord, the E7. So you can mix that in there with it now. That time I just did a regular E major chord, which you can always do that when you have a dominant seven chord. You can just play just the three notes of the chord. So the next thing is that that flat seven, which is a D note, it's also right here on the fifth fret of the A string. So two, two, four, four, five, five, four, four, two. Right back to that, you could add it sometimes. This is all stuff you can improvise. This is all the world of an E7 chord. Added that flat seven right there on the fifth fret of the A string, plus the full chord.
Now next, we also have some stuff we can do along the root string, the E string. So we have a nice little bend here on the third fret. So it's always like a and one, two, three, four, two, three, four, and one. That's the best spot to start with that. And once again, it's a thing you're improvising. You're not going to add it every time. Now, if you write a riff. With a specific, you know, set of of those things, and now you've written a riff, but these are all part of that same world that you can improvise. E5, then the, then add the fifth fret. Then, now we have this. Uh, let's go back to the full E chord. little third fret bend there is really good within the E chord. Now also that bend goes really nice to the octave of E. with that full E chord, E7, etc. You've seen me do it a few times in this video, but it's hammering on the major third from the minor third. If you don't know what that means, that's okay. In the E chord, the G sharp in an E7 and an E major, the G sharp is the third of the chord. It's a major third. When you hammer it on from the minor third up, it has a bluesy element to it. other chords yet. We're only focused on the E there. So what's cool with the blues is you can move it over a string and do all that same stuff in with the four chord of the blues, A. But the chord's not the E7, obviously. It's A7, which you can play that open G string in there. The G note right there on the third fret high E. One finger with that, just the A major. If you've watched one of my oldest videos on YouTube, for the four chord, you can do the entire land of A7. Okay, so then the next thing is when I was talking about that major third up here, It's also right here, which would be before we were just doing the third fret there. But when you give it a little bend, you're in that microtonal between the minor third, major third. It feels good in the blues, but you can do straight up 
passing tone into the major third, which is between the three and the four. And you hear that in Stevie Ray Vaughan, Pride and Joy. So you start with the E power chord, then three, four on the E string. And then back to the E power chord. Then up to that, fourth fret A string. And then the octave E. Then from there, back to the three, four, so. So right from that octave. So that second fret D, dun, dun, three, four, back to this thing. I'm just kind of strumming right along, a, grooving along the top strings there. One finger there. Another thing in there is that A and then hammering on the E. Now I do have a Pride and Joy lesson that you can go check out, so I'm not going to de deconstruct it all the way. It's more showing you the next steps there. So let's just recap. We have E major, E7, E7 again, then we have the E5, which is just the first two notes. Add the fourth fret A string. And we add the fifth fret as well. Then we add the little bendy on the third fret E string with that. the three four which is now the major third in there
going with it. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that lesson. Uh, I've got a bunch of courses, uh, a bunch of free courses as well at my website, martymusic.com. Uh, also, I appreciate you subscribing to the channel, Marty Music, right here. And, you know, great links in the description below. So thank you for all that extra support. Hope to see you again. Take care.